What's your favorite type of music? Is it classical? Rock? Bluegrass? No matter what type of music you like, it's all made up of sound waves that are transmitted either by analog or digital electronic signals. What we hear can't be ever 100% replicated, but analog is, this, is the truest replication of it. Whereas in digital, digital is a replication of that same sound in more of a scientific way. Robert Siciliano is a sound engineer for NBC Universal. His career in music has spanned decades. There's a lot actually happening in there. Beginning as a musician recording music with analog machines to working exclusively with digital music today. I was a musician when I was younger. So hanging around, playing music all the time, hanging around in studios, I learned more and more about sound and got interested in it. And it just became a natural path. For example, take a look at this video clip without sound. It doesn't look like a promotion you would normally see on TV. It's missing music and sound effects. Sunday, race, religion. It's Siciliano's job to use his digital soundboard. We are one people. Chuck Todd leads the mixing programs to add in music and sound effects to make the promotion feel exciting. Reem Abdul Jabbar. Sunday, race, religion, and politics. Chuck Todd leads the conversation. After he adds the music and sound effects, you not only hear the difference, you can feel it. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Like at a concert, your ears can feel vibrations coming at you from the stage. And the reason you can feel them is because sound waves are naturally an analog signal. Sound waves are the natural continuous vibrations that move through the air and that our ears detect. An analog recording is an exact replica of the sound you're hearing. It's basically the printing of the actual waveforms. The first sound recording that reproduced an analog signal was Thomas Edison's phonograph, invented way back in 1878. It printed sound vibrations on a thin layer of wax. When the handle is turned, the printed sounds play back almost exactly as they were recorded. The phonograph eventually became vinyl records that are still preferred by many musicians today. And there's a, a different feel to the analog. If I had to think about it, printing an analog recording, because of what happens, and it's a piece of tape and there's glue and different things involved that could fall apart at different times, it's never the same twice, you know, and that's sort of what art is. Today, however, most music is recorded and played back using a digital electronic signal. A digital signal is a numerical representation of an analog signal, using zeros and ones, lined up in different patterns. That means when you record something using digital signals, it is really using short bursts of sound that are collected together to mimic a sound wave. Digital music became popular in the 1990s with digitally recorded compact discs, or CDs, that made it more convenient than ever to listen to music outside of the home. Now, digital music files are so small that they can be sent from the internet to your computer, tablet, or cell phone in seconds. In the digital world, you can create a sound that maybe has a, a compromise in the quality, but the gains are gonna be um, size. You know, it's the only way you could put a thousand songs on an iPod. If you had an analog signal, you'd probably get three songs on that iPod in the same amount of space. That's why at work, when Siciliano has to compose music for a video, he uses digital sound to do it. You don't have to choose which is the better way. They're just avenues. So analog is a great vehicle that has a great purpose, and digital has a great purpose. Now it's your turn to be the sound engineer. What type of electronic signal, digital or analog, would you use to record your sound? And what kind of device would you use to play it back? <laughs>